rally on me. Matter Transfer Sciences, owned by Ahmed Akbar, will attempt to complete the first matter transfer machine. Someone's using a secure line to communicate with the outside. I'm gonna find out who. Oh my gosh. That's Rashad Amir. Stop away from the computer! Step away! In my wildest expectations, I would have never figured that you would create time travel. My mind is racing with the possibilities. Transferring matter was bad enough. The time travel in your hands. If Ram created matter transfer, they can go anywhere GPS coordinates can take them. Are you okay? We have a problem. I agreed to build the time machine. They already did it. They sent Ram a team somewhere already. Jesus is a prophet. We should honor him. Yes. We will be correcting the greatest deception of all time. I get it. It's the ultimate jihad. Eliminate Christianity by killing Jesus before the resurrection. Muhammad just killed off every Christian that ever existed. He will be remembered as a great prophet, but not as the son of God. That was one of the best again. ones we've ever done. Very good. Very Pretty well coordinated. That was we're we're like, ideas. it's getting better every time. We're so fucking good, boys. We're so fucking good. Every other podcast fucking sucks dick at fucking sticking up their audacity. You all fucking suck dick. Stop fucking podcasting. We're the fucking best. You're dog shit at this fucking game. Fuck you. <laughs> dog shit player. <laughs> Fuck you. All right. Let's, um, let's kick this one off. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. It's Chapo here. Uh, it's me, Matt, and Felix on this one. And uh, we got a, um, a, a fairly juicy um, Christian film for you for that we're going to break down and analyze for you that, you know, uh, spoiler alert, out of the just, I feel like dozens of these that we've watched, uh, The Reliance, um, The Fireman Prophecy, all the Dinesh D'Souza movies, the one, the where, ben Fra- the one where Ben Franklin hangs out with uh, Paula, Paula <laughs> Yeah, Dean's the one we did with Bill Corbett. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Out of all of these, this is the first one we've seen that like approaches like a real movie and like yeah, actually definitely. was like kind of nice with it. Kind of nice movie, with it. This movie was, it was ambitious. It had production values. It is a new genre. This is a new genre, right? Christian hard sci-fi. This is a totally Hell new yes. thing. It's never existed before. And, and it's like, honestly, like it, I, I, you would think that those two genres would be incompatible with each other, hard science fiction and like a sort of evangelical Christian movie. But actually, it works surprisingly well. And like this is not a movie where you can go through and, and poke holes in like all the, the idiotic screenwriting or plot. Like this was actually like like a, this is like a like a snare drum. This was tight. Yeah. But we do um, want to make clear this is still an evangelical movie. So it was incredibly racist. <laughs> well it, it was pretty it was it had it certainly it was not free of goofiness or corniness but as far as these movies goes it definitely uh it ra- it, it there's definitely the the most interesting plot that like had me get like sort of engaged with it like you know we'll we'll get there let, but like let's talk about for the movie today we're talking about some historical events or one historical event in particular the film we have selected today to watch and discuss and analyze for you is a film that came out this year. It is it's a very new one. It's called Assassin 33 AD. And this film pre- asked the question, what would happen if a terrorist group invented time travel and then used it to go back in time and kill Jesus Christ? <laughs> Which I got to say... It does more, like it does way more interesting stuff with the time travel concept, which is something that's been beaten to death in movies thus far, than almost any other film that's like dabbled in in time travel. I mean, I put this up there with you know La Jetée, Time Cop, 
Hot Tub Time Machine, the Terminator films, you know, the real classics of the genre. This is a, a, a fairly worthy entry. You know, I, w- I won't put it on the level of, you know, Terminator, but certainly Chris Marker's La Jete. It and, definitely and, you know, puts more thought into the time travel element of itself and like does stuff with that than say Looper. Yeah. No, oh, this yeah. is way this better is, than Looper. Christian Looper kicks the shit out of regular Looper. Absolutely. Like this okay, is so- this is a ambitious uh it, it's like it, it H.G. Wells would fall to his knees at the sight of Jim Carroll, the author of this incredible screenplay, who truly thought this out. He truly thought this out. I don't know what type of church this movie is affiliated with. I assume one of those evangelical churches that's called like refoundationings. <laughs> Where they have like, where they have like, you know, sober raves and like, you know, uh, laser tag and youth ministry. But to keep it up, guys. This fucking rocks. I mean, like, honestly, maybe cool with the racism, but this shit fucking rocks. I like, okay, I like, uh, we will describe for you what happens in this movie, but like, I will preface it by way of saying that like, were this same concept like executed by someone who wasn't like a, like an like an, a true believer. What you would get is like a very close and faithful rendition of like a Philip K. Dick story. This movie, like, if it, if the same concept had been like slightly tweaked, it could have gone some really interesting places that would be like really actually like up there in like kind of a sci fi pantheon. Like I said, like this would be very at home in like the Philip K. Dick canon. So, oh, yeah. and I gotta say, as far as like all of these Christian movies, or really most of the movies we've watched on this show, unlike especially the Christian movies, this has a professionalism to it. Like this looks like an like something you would see on like a like a cable TV channel, like a TV show or like a low budget movie. Like crucially, Matt, as you said, the entire movie doesn't look like it was filmed in like someone's backyard yeah. of a subdivision, like the yeah. Reliant. Or like most of that movie was just filmed in like the woods behind some guy's McMansion. And like, you know, the the performances were like credible enough. You know, like it, it just It worked. It it, it it did not it wasn't like howlingly like like uh glaringly unprofessional and and like poorly done at ever or like just just flat you know like all all, mo- all these christian movies it's just like i just watch them and like the, there's just no propulsion to the plot nothing seems to happen we forget who the characters are like people just show up and go away without any reason whereas this one you know it had a pretty propulsive you know tight like i said tightly plotted fairly well executed film you know so, why that is? Uh, it's sort of yeah, it's sort of interesting. Do, do you know why the evangelical movies we usually watch are so flat and bad? It's because the theology of American Protestantism itself is so flat. The entire yes. belief system is we figured out everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are no, there's no mystery in the universe. Which you know that's why so many great movies come from religious traditions that are the opposite of that. The idea that God is mystery, that we live in pain. There are so many great... Like the Coen brothers. Yeah, the Coen brothers or like uh, sort of Catholic tinged movies. Abel Ferrara. Yeah, yeah Ferrara, but, Scorsese. Yeah. Uh, but why, why, but why, is, why does this movie not have that? It's because they've added an element of the unknown in their theology, which is... What if evangelicals and Muslims had access to time machines? <laughs> that does throw a wrench into things. Yeah. You're not just listening to some guy like noodle on the guitar in a converted Best Buy. Like that yeah. makes you have to think for at least a minute. Yeah. All these well, other movies, I- all these other movies, like it's bad things happening to people and then and then them going like, I'm going to be OK because I believe in God. And he kind of yeah. fixes it. Well, this- think, there's no action. You just have to forgive. Yeah. So it's there's no actual thing to do in these movies. Here, I, you got to say Jesus. What I appreciated about what uh, Jim Carroll, uh, no relation to the Jim Carroll band, unfortunately, uh, what I appreciated about what he did with this movie is that by adding the element of time travel, it, it creates a kind of like an actual uh, attention uh, to live out and sort of like uh, dramatize like a lot of like interesting like theological and like intellectual questions that mm-hmm. do sort of have to do with Christianity. About like you know, so let's just get into it. Yes. So uh, Matt, Matt, unfortunately, uh, he was um, he had, he had, he was doing mud pies. He was uh, shitting out his doo doo ass. Um, no, no, Matt joined the movie late. So uh, Felix and I will uh, uh, relate to you like the the very beginning of the movie. So it begins, and it is a it's a man and his family driving in a car. Uh, the wife is played by a reality former reality TV star Heidi Montag. Mm-hmm. And friend remember of from, uh, Yeah, But Still podcast. 
Oh yeah, you may remember from The Hills, right? She was she was on that. Yes, movie. yes, yes. Staring okay, at the blank uh, page before me. Uh, do not uh, get your hopes up, though. She is not in this movie for very long. So because these guys know what they're doing. Yeah, uh, yeah, of, of, yeah. Because like I said, like as soon as it started, and I saw her and like read a couple lines, I was like, oh brother, here we go again. Another unbelievably bad, like just poorly, just poorly done on every level, just like shit show. Thankfully, she is dispensed with very early because it is a family, and the husband is like driving to his new job or whatever. He's got his wife in the front seat, his two daughters in the back seat, and you know he's just like, you know, honey, I think this is a. Uh, this is what God wants for me. And his wife sort of just becomes overcome in the moment. And Heidi Montag looks at him and says, she sort of gets, she tears up and she's like, honey, I just, I just have the feeling that God is going to do something miraculous for you. And he's like, really? Through you. And through you, God is going to do something miraculous through you. And he's like, really, baby? And he doesn't have much time to think about that because the car is T-boned by a truck. Okay. I'm Having this feeling that God is about to do something real miraculous through you. Flips over. <laughs> He's like on the ground. Why? Why? What happened? Cars on fire. Wife and daughters just annihilated. Just owned. 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 <laughs> this, folks, there's no other word for it. <laughs> okay, cut cut ahead a few months, like even just like a few weeks actually, and we're in a college like a like a college classroom, and there's sort of like a like a nerdish character and like a like a young woman who he's sort of like awkwardly running into, uh, taking a very complicated science test, and he's like, blah, 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 uh, finished. Oh man, that was tough. I think I aced it. Um, and then like you know he sort of like makes an awkward date with the the other young young genius who took this this test. He still lives with his parents and he brings this like hot young woman to his parents' basement where he like, she's like, okay, I guess we're going out to a restaurant. And he's like, uh, how about we stay in? And like, he just brings like two plates out of like, per, of like a fully prepared meal out of his refrigerator. That's the like, status. And then they hang out in his science basement. And then strangely, like she dresses him up in his parents' clothing. And I, I, this is the one part of the movie that I was just like, what's going on here? What am I, what am I looking at? Well, that, that's like, like, okay, so that is, you didn't like this part, and I at first agreed with you, but now I kind of think it's another piece of genius filmmaking. And I think that Jim Carroll, I, just judging by his name, he is a 50-year-old man, but he's hip, he's with the times, and he knows that our hero, Ram, Ram Goldstein, the Jewish scientist, wants a mommy GF. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, okay. Sorry, sorry. Our, our main character, as he looks, is 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 the is the young science genius Ram Goldstein, and then there is like his love interest girl, who is also a genius scientist, but she is a she is a devout Christian. She wears a crucifix necklace, and they sort of they spar a little bit about you know God and praying and things like that, which is a staple of these movies, like the skeptic character, the sort of uh, the condescending scientist versus like you know. The, the smart but still faithful Christian. But and there's a, but, I, but like, I gotta say, like, as, this movie, like, usually, like, the, this part of these kind of movies are like unbearably, like, over the top. And like, the non believer is just such an asshole. And yeah. it's just all very stilted and like, just like, it's too on the nose. Whereas I, I thought it was rendered in a way that was like the, the, the kind of like uh, the debate between the believer and the non believer, between the, the atheistic scientist and the, you know, uh, the Christian was done in a way that was not like just like like nails on a chalkboard or like it was it was like kind of faithfully rendered in a way that I could imagine two people having this actual conversation. No, like it I, seemed like something a little bit real. These parts were great because like, yeah, usually in these evangelical movies, when you have like the soy nonbeliever guy, he's like, uh, yeah, if God's real, he'd strike me down right now. And it's like later we find out they're like a pedophile or like killed somebody or like bad. <laughs> but like Ram's like he's a good guy. He's just like a little socially maladroit. And he, they have interesting debates. And then like later he like becomes Christian. You can so, cut that part. Yeah. So I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> okay. So then, then we find out like, okay, the, the, the sort of science test that they were taking was like a test that was like given by this like uh, sort of rich guy in his like institution, his science institution, where like the the like the top four people who pass this incredibly hard science test are recruited by this like technology firm 
to work on like a secret project. And then we see them and like they've been hired and it's like it's it's Ram, his girlfriend now at this point. You know, that's, that's the other thing. Because usually like the, the movie takes for granted that like, you know, a Christian could date someone who is like a non-believer. Like she's not a totally like, you know, stringent, you know, uh, uh, puritanical in her beliefs. Like she's she's sort of cool and realistic. You know, she's like like a real person, not like a Christian person being portrayed in a movie. And then there is a Latino guy and a black guy that's also working with them. And uh, the Latino guy's really only personality trait is that he has a stuffed penguin that he's really into. And then, like, the black guy, like I said, is sort of racistly there for kind of comic relief where he's, like, you know, just kind of, you know, mugging for the camera and, like, yeah. saying... He's just there, there to be like a little comical, you know. Yeah, the the black guy presumed like so he passed the same science test, science test that these other geniuses pass, but he's always like, like he's like, man, when are we gonna go to the Wiz Khalifa concert? <laughs> like, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, the black guy, the black scientist was recruited from Taylor Gang. Yeah, I think like there's a lot of subtext that, like in the movie where it's like we're supposed to think the black guy isn't nearly as smart as Ram or the woman or whatever, but it's like. They all passed the same test. Like, presumably, they were the four best scientists in that class doing the science test. But you know. so, okay, so like they're 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 working at this like you know this secret privately run science project, and their benefactor is referred to as the world's most famous refugee. And then I think we learned his name is like Ahmed Akbar or something. Yes, yes. And he's this sort of no, doc- no, wait, wait, wait. Ahmed Akbar. I don't want to spoil it, but he's a very important character that Ram sees him talk to. <laughs> or no wait that's that's um that's Sabir Sheikh Amir or some shit Sabir Sabir is his is his henchman so yeah. like he's he's this rich benefactor who's um you know paying paying them a nice salary and he's like oh my you you kids are so brilliant like you've you've made more headway on this project than my entire you know research staff has in years or whatever and you're you're on the verge of this big discovery and what they're working on we find out is basically the Brendelfly teleporter. They're trying to figure out a way to transmit matter through space. You know, that, like, as we said, this is what Seth Brendel was trying to do before he, you know, famously. This is what Mark Brendel was doing with his two chairs. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying um, to move them across the room. So they're on the verge of creating a teleporter. And then, again, like I said, in a pretty kind of like tight bit of like sci fi sort of, you know, universe building and, and, and concept um, mongering. He realizes, Ram realizes that essentially, if you believe correctly, because you've listened to the Alan Moore Chapo episode, that time exists as physical space, as a fourth dimension of physical space, as a constant. A, te- a machine that can teleport matter through space is, by definition, also a time machine. And he realizes that like the, like the key to syncing up teleportation is factoring in time. So inadvertently in getting the teleportation machine to work, he realizes that they have accidentally created a time travel machine. Oh, shit. And that like if you can transport like a chair or even a human body from one time pad to the other, then necessarily you can transmit it through space to a point in a fixed point in time that exists, you know, concurrently with every other moment in time. Right. You guys with me? I'm feeling it. See, this is already more thought than anyone has ever put into all combined Christian films. Yeah. Or even the film Time Cop, where they like they waste the potential. Oh, God, uh, what a waste of a concept. That still <laughs> yeah. pisses me off to think about. There's two scenes in the pat. There's a scene where the guy steals some Confederate gold, and there's a scene where Van Damme throws a, a guy out of the window during the Great Depression. And yeah. That's it. I mean, to be fair, they really only go to one time location in this movie, but they do a lot with it. They do they a do lot more with it than Time you, Cop did, that's for yeah. sure. Most you could do with this time travel. So not shortly thereafter, Rom discovers that he has invented time travel. Him and his girlfriend like sneak off to like the server room for a little canoodling. And then like while they're there, he's like, hey, what's this? Like someone's attempting to access the server from the outside. Let's just uh, tap into this and see what this outside communication is. And they like open up the vid screen and it is like a, you know, uh, Al Qaeda style terrorist leader uh, communicating with their benefactor, Ahmed Akbar. And he's like, is, is, is the teleportation device complete? And he's like, we're almost there. We're almost there. Uh, you know, Allah, <laughs> we're doing this for you. And, you know, they're like, oh, as soon as we have it, 
we can transport a bomb to any GPS coordinates in the world. And ha ha, ha like we, will we shouldn't have let those refugees in. They become <laughs> super wealthy and build teleportation devices. And how many times does it need to happen? I mean, okay. honestly, how stupid are we, folks? Yeah. Uh, we do get a little backstory for Ahmed is that like when he was a child, he saw his parents executed by like ISIS style terrorists for being Christian. And it, it's never explained how he like started out as Christian and then became a fundamentalist Muslim. Yeah, so I, I, was, I, I, I thought like I thought Ahmed would be like that. They were doing like the have you ever seen like teacots or QNP? They put the arabic christian symbol in their bios and it's like yeah, for a, that's the yeah. good type of muslim the christian kind yeah but it's like it's it, like this movie's very steadfast in its belief that even the christian type of muslim is a muslim well the i the think day. the main thing is like the easy the no the easy no-brainer here is yeah he got killed by like u.s troops or something or israel well, no, they clearly, they, <laughs> but they, you yeah, can't they, do that like these guys yeah. they have certain mental uh is, 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 you know, whatever, however creative this movie is, there are certain mental blocks. And one of them is the idea of like humanizing someone who is a victim of American or Israeli violence. They could never do that. Yeah. So instead, it's like they basically, the Muslims negged me into joining them by killing my parents. Yeah. And, and uh, so they, they try to address this. They try to address this. And our genius, Ram Goldstein, is like, oh, it's Munchausen syndrome. That's why he's a Muslim. <laughs> Stockholm <Muslim>. syndrome. <laughs> Stockholm <laughs> syndrome. Munchausen syndrome. No, they say Munchausen. Do, no, she says they? Stockholm syndrome. Oh. Um, so you, you've, got, you've got Ahmed, who is secretly working for the terrorists to develop a matter transport device so that they can blow up, you know, I don't know, the, the Pentagon or the, the Second World Trade Center. Yeah. Which actually raises another, an interesting religious question. Like, if they're going to use a teleportation device to just instantly, like, move a bomb anywhere they want, it would sort of do away with the need for martyrdom. And they would need to, they would have, like, they wouldn't need to justify killing yourself in a holy war anymore if you could just move a bomb because the whole brilliant part about suicide bombing is that if you're willing to die it's very easy to get a pretty decent explosive device into almost anywhere you need to get it oh yeah and kill a lot of people to do it i think in so, the sequel they'll address this okay so if you had a matter transport device it would obviate the need for uh martyrdom interesting the movie doesn't movie doesn't address <laughs> this but it's just just a thought i had now okay so concurrently to all of this you have the guy whose family was killed in the very beginning of the movie. His name is Brant, and he's sort of like an operator. He's an ex-operator guy, and we see like footage of him uh, weeks after his family dies, and he's like in a bottle, and he like takes out a gun, and he like is thinking about blowing his brains out, and he's like, "No, I'm not a coward." I'm going that was back to that me. was awesome. They came out strong against suicide in this movie. <laughs> Uh, saying what everyone's too afraid to say, that it's for cowards. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. Um, so he's like, no, like, fuck this. I may be depressed. And he's like, he's angry at God. He's like in his living room and he's like, how could you let this happen, God? Like, I, I served you. I did everything for you and you took my family from me. Like, you, you know, you let it happen. You wanted it to happen. You didn't stop it from happening. You know, it's all the same to me. Like, you're a, you're a bastard, you son of a bitch. He's, yeah, doing, he's, he's doing the he, Jebediah. He's doing the Bartlett stuff. He's yeah, doing yeah, Bartlett yeah. Stuff. But, it's but I mean, this guy Bar honestly Bartlett? has more reason to do it than Bartlett. Like, Bartlett, this guy's like, yeah. you, you killed my family, God. How could you do this? Whereas Bartlett was like, I lowered tariffs on trades from Mexico, you son of a bitch. Yeah, Bartlett, that wasn't is, like, good Bartlett enough for is yelling at God because his extremely elderly secretary died and because his approval ratings are only 40%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bartlett's nope. a, Bar and Bartlett, like, does it in, in Latin, which is, like, why would God speak Latin, you fucking idiot? But Brant does it in this movie in, in the American true language Protestant of God. Style. Yeah. American Protestant English, the true language of God. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will get that. That becomes a plot point in this yeah. movie. Yeah. But we, we are not there yet. So Brant's like, okay, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going back to work for... The world's most famous refugee and secret terrorist, Ahmed Akbar. And he's like a sort of private security contractor who's, you know, uh, he's like the head of security for this, um, uh, the, you know, the technology firm where the young geniuses have just invented time travel. And Ahmed's just like, you know, hey, like, you know, uh, you, uh, we brought on your team, but like, just make sure nobody knows about this project because like, that's what you're hired for is to preserve my, you know, intellectual property and, you know, like trademarks on this like technology that I'm developing. So 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 Brant is working as like an, an ex operator who's lost his faith in God and family for a guy who's secretly developed time travel and is also a terrorist. 
So at some point, uh, it becomes clear that to, to Ahmed and his like gang of like evil Muslimic style Confederates uh, that that Ram Goldstein has not just got their teleportation device to, device to work, but like I said, has invented time travel. And then like I, I, I forget, it's sort of he tries to stop them or hide this revelation from them, and they get wise to it and like detain him. They like you know handcuff him to a chair, hit him with a taser, and then tell the three other young geniuses that like oh like he's fine, but you can't leave here or call anyone for the next like couple days until you know we get this get this done. And so they like they they sort of sequester him, and like he he's done something to the device where like he he's the only one that knows the code that can turn on like the the, the computer that will like get the time travel coordinates to work. Blah blah blah. I forget at what point Ahmed decides to use the time travel device to erase Christianity. I mean, this is where we get the title of the movie from, Assassin 33 AD. He's like, why send bombs to, you know, the State Department or whatever when I can just go back in time and do away with, you know, a Christian America, all of Christianity ever existing, which is, you know, this is what the terrorists want to do. And this raises another interesting question because, like, I... Like I said, as competently done as this was for the people making it, I don't think they took seriously enough the actual kind of um, Wahhabist, uh, you know, ISIS-style terrorist mindset. Because as, as we were watching this, I said, if they, if they had a, time, a working time machine and had the choice to go back in time and kill Jesus, who's a very important prophet in Islam, or kill Ali who founded the offshoot apostate, uh, you know, Shia Islam, I think they would definitely whack out all of Shia Islam and have one perfect sort of Sunni caliphate rather than do away with Christendom. Or saying, they would, if you believe some theories about ISIS, they would go back in time and uh, make sure that Frank Church was never born. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that is the actual thing they would do. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway... Yes. Uh, Ahmed now has a working time machine and he's going to use it to send a team of operators back to Palestine in 33 AD to kill Jesus Christ before he is martyred. And now this brought up an interesting question to me and I was trying to poke holes in the plot and I was like, wait a second. Like if like, you know, it, like if they go back in time and, and kill Jesus Christ, like they, they erase the history of Christianity, but like, wouldn't that necessarily also erase the history of Islam, which necessarily comes after Christianity is like, you know, Christianity was an incomplete revelation of God that Muhammad fulfilled as his prophet and that Christ himself was a, an important prophet, but just not a believer. And then Matt correctly pointed out that it's assassin 33 AD, not assassin zero AD. Yes. So they're not going back in time to kill baby Jesus, thus erasing his entire life and, and history. He is an important prophet in Islam. So up to that. that point, they're merely killing him before his believers get it in their head that he was resurrected. Because that and is that he sacrificed. Because like it, it's like they're Muslims, so they don't think Jesus rose from the dead, but they do think that he was crucified, and their thinking rightly is it was his sacrifice that like galvanized his supporters and created this social movement that became Christianity. If you take him out before, uh, you know, Pilate and the, the crucifix and all that stuff, he's just some guy mouthing off. We can't kill him. Jesus is a prophet. We should honor him. Yes, and that's what we will be doing. When he died, his disciples created the resurrection myth, which gave birth to Christianity. We can correct that. But if we kill him, we'll all be cursed. Just the opposite. Allah would honor us. We will be correcting the greatest deception of all time. He will be remembered as a great prophet, but not as a son of God. Jesus would want that. And we will be effectively dismantling Christianity. Exactly. He's just one of the many other Messiah figures like of that era yeah. in that time and place in the world. And the, like, the other interesting thing is that, like, yeah, it's almost like the resurrection is almost not as important as his, 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 his sacrifice and suffering on the cross. It's that he was willing to die for it. That it's like that's like the yes. actually kind of the most mm -hmm. important thing. The resurrection is sort of like just the icing on the cake. They're like, right, oh, and, shit, as, this was exactly. this real. They don't what? think it happened. That's the crucial yeah. thing. Non Christians um, but, don't think that but, happened. Yeah, but his, his sacrifice is still important. So they like they're going back to a moment of time, and they go back in time basically to the exact moment of the temptation in the garden, 
like yeah. right before he is kissed on the cheek by Judas and handed off to the the centurions. So they're gonna like do away with like even like even his like his his uh, his martyrdom on the cross, right? Which also raises another point. I think the slickest move, if you were the terrorist of the time machine, is to go back and just bring like a herd of goats with you and just bribe Pontius Pilate to just be like, yeah, just let this guy go. Just leave him alone. Because that would do away with the sacrifice. He would just be another guy then. So like that's the slickest move. No assassination is even really necessary if you just pay off Pilate to just let him go with a slap on the wrist and just ignore him for the rest of his life. Interesting. Like I said... Raises a lot of questions, this movie. Yeah, it's uh, it, like I said, they really thought it through. Yeah, it's not like this again. It's not just like, oh, something bad happens. Better time to really believe in God, buddy. It's like, no, what, 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 what is the true nature of our belief? What are the facts of our beliefs? Just an incredible, a rare, a rare work ethic from evangelical filmmakers <laughs> in all ways. So... At, at this point, um, Ram is dedicated not... It, it knows that his boss is a terrorist. Knows that he can... In no way... I mean, letting a terrorist have a teleportation machine, bad enough. Letting a terrorist have a time machine? Buddy, that's oh, the one buddy, thing you yeah. don't do. That's the one thing we don't want to yeah. have. Oh, no! We have a terrorist time machine! The exact thing we were trying to prevent. Yeah. Um. So, like, you know, he's trying to hold out and be like, I'll never, I'll never give you the code, Ahmed. And then Ahmed makes Brant his security consultant. He's like, this guy has information I need. You're an operator. You know how to get it from him. Do your thing. And the guy's like, whoa, 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 really? But because his faith is shattered, he takes to it pretty quickly. And he handcuffs him to a chair and just punches him in the face a couple times. And he's like, this guy's not budging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy's you know, good. He used all his master Green Beret interrogation techniques, which is just tying a guy down and punching him. He needed. He really needed like three years of specialization training for that. The same thing that like any hot dog neck Chicago cop can do. <laughs> I mean, they would have done it with the phone book. That'd yeah, get yeah, John yeah, Burge in there. Yeah, he would have fucking Burge, settled that shit out quick. Yeah, and you could have paid John Burge plastic in, like, bag over the head. Uh, that yeah, well. I mean, Ahmed Ahmed is supposed to be like a, a evil genius, but like he could have just paid some Chicago imbecile and Kiel Bassa and got the same expertise <laughs> he got from. Brand. Yeah, so what you want out of this guy? Yeah, no yeah. problem. <laughs> you, you want this guy to build some kind of time machine? Yeah, I got that for yeah. you. All right, yeah, fa- yeah. <laughs> the Madigans have a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ahmed's like, okay, this guy's uh, a little bit, a little bit more of a tough cookie than we had anticipated. Um, I'm going to send out Samir and my other terrorist friends to kidnap his parents, bring them to the uh, my office, and then execute them in front of him, which he does. And Ram does not give up the code after he watches his dad and then mom get tapped in the head right in front of him. So he's taking Rob's it pretty baller. seriously. But then Ahmed, at, literally, he, he is willing to watch his parents get executed. But the thing Ram won't do is uh, let his girlfriend be roughed up by a terrorist. Uh, we should point out that she's stacked, so it's understandable. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of fire. She's kind of like a she's kind of like a Dana Loesch type. Yeah, but again, not nearly as like shrill, cruel, or vindictive as as any of these like actual you know like the 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 young evangelical baddies uh, that who you're aware of through the media are. Like my, the girlfriend my, in this movie is like a good person. My dream is for just an evangelical baddie who fucking hates me. It's my fucking guts. <laughs> That's the key that they need. That's the leverage that they need for him to get the time machine working. And, you know, he turns it on and they like they like they he, he gets Brant who I mean, again, like they're just like, OK, uh, he started out the day just thinking he was like a private security consultant for like a technology company. As the day progresses, he's torturing uh, like a young man and then participating in like his parents being executed in an act of torture. So he's like, again, I guess if you lose your faith, you can fall pretty low. And then shortly thereafter that, he's just like, oh, yeah, I'm now part of a wet work team that's going to be transported back to <laughs> Palestine in the first century to kill the Messiah. But he's fine with it. He's fine with it. He, fuck God. He let his wife die. Yeah. Kids die. Well, this is this is also a message. It's like a, this movie this is a message to evangelical men that like this is what happens when you don't work in your brother-in-law's boat store. Like, this is the type of stuff you can get up to. Like, so watch out for that. 
So uh, yeah, the, the, there's a scene where he, uh, where Brant, the, uh, the 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 faithless operator, is sort of like questioning himself after he's been beating up a teenager or whatever, or <laughs> and or you know, the guy, he's not a teenager, but yeah, just beating up some science science nerd who did nothing wrong and is just, you know, just just doing his job inventing teleportation, really. Um, and then he's like, you know, I didn't. He's like sort of have, having a moment where he's sort of talking to the God he doesn't believe in, and he's like, God. I've fallen pretty low. I didn't think I would be torturing a kid today, but you know what? Like, if you don't show yourself to me right now, I mean, right now, right now, everything that happens after this, that's on you, God. That's on you. And it raises another interesting theological question because this movie, of course, presupposes that God is real and that everything that happens is on him so that God is, participates in sending an operator back in time to assassinate uh, his son and himself, if you believe in, you know, a triune God. So it's sort of like God, everything that does happen after this, it is on him and it is also part of his plan. So it makes sense. They send the operators, by the way, in full SWAT team gear back to, like I said, the garden at, uh, Gess- Gess- was it? Uh, Gethsemane? Uh, Gethsemane. Gethsemane, yeah, the garden at Gethsemane. They send a full wet work team in like SWAT team gear and like fucking like assault ARs back to the, the temptation of the garden. And what happens? Brant, the fucking, op- like they, they, you know, they spray a couple of the disciples. And then like they, I think they tag Jesus in the leg. And then Brant yeah, is like, Jesus, like Jesus gets legged. He's bleeding out, but it's like, you can tag and bag him. You can uh, give him a, a Muslim Christian burial. Let's see. So Brant is standing over, the Son of God, the Messiah. And then Jesus Christ starts speaking to him in English. And when that first started in the movie, I was like, oh, this is fucking ridiculous. The guy, he's speaking English, a language that hasn't even been invented yet to this guy in perfect 20th century, 21st century American Protestant Christian English. But then they explain that Brant is the only one who experiences that. None of the other Muslimic style assassins they're just hearing Aramaic or like they're, they're not being spoken to in a language they recognize. So Brant experiences Jesus Christ speaking to him in a language that doesn't exist is communicating with him, which is like pretty, a pretty good indication that this, that it's the real McCoy that you're dealing with (laughs) again, who you're standing over with like a 45 caliber handgun pointed at his head. And then he's like, are you the son of God? Like, you know, like if you really were the son of God, you would stop this from happening. And then he's like, but Brant, what if I want it to happen? I like Brandt's it. Like, I'm actually Brandt's laughing. like, you know what? You made a good point. Pow, pow. <laughs> Double tap to the head. If you really are the son of God, you can stop these bullets. Unless I allow it. No. You are not giving me your life. I am taking it from you. Lives too. you must just more lives. This is for taking my family. Like this was the moment that this movie really became something special. Oh, I was I was stunned. I love this. I love this. I assumed, this. I assumed that right. like this yeah, is, it was is... gonna just be you know some some ululating uh, uh, guys in uh, in. Uh, uh, baklava shooting Jesus with AKs. No, this is an American uh, operator talking in Jesus in English and then blowing his brains out with a nine no, millimeter. Like a let, like the, I was expecting, like the the Christianity movies Mark One would have had a guy like the Muhammad Muhammad Akbar go back in time, be like Allah Allah Allah, and then just like spray him with an AK and then fire the AK into the air, or just do like just do a bunch of racist cartoonist bullshit. The fact that this movie makes Christ's executioner a former U.S. soldier and faithful servant of Christ who has lost his faith, then experience something miraculous happen. And by that, I mean a guy speaking in English, not time travel, which is already (laughs) a big one. That's a big one. He experiences both time travel and then interacts with the Son of God and then just cold-blooded, pop, pop just executes him, puts him down like a dog. And this was this was the most ideological thing we've ever seen in these movies. Like, these other movies are so lazy. Like, 
Reliant, we thought it was going to be about, like, Antifa, but it doesn't even commit to anything. None of these movies fucking commit to anything except, like, oh, like, God is good. But yeah. this is, like, no. American Protestants need to be able to kill God to ensure he's real. Yes. <laughs> like, it's yes. so that- fucking, oh, it's so we alpha, talked, dude. Like, we, have, we have talked, like, uh, uh, at great length on this show, especially recently about American Protestantism and what a kind of... A, a, a sui generis sort of mutation in religious history, the coming together of the currents of Protestantism and the Reformation and the colon, like the colonization of the American continent by those people created something that heretofore didn't exist. And that is articulated, I think, a fairly convincing case that American Protestantism of any kind of any variety is in and of itself a new and original religion. It is a yeah. new form of Christianity that did not and would not exist without the creation of America happening concurrently to it. Yes, because it is the worship, the God that the American Protestant worships is America, not God. Yes, but crucially in this movie, like it, like a Catholic never could have made this movie. Never. A Catholic would have just been agonized over like, you know, your own sin or your complicity in the... Uh, crucifixion you, yeah Christ. like he would have the fallen American... down and cried at jesus like Kaitel yeah. and bad yeah. lieutenant i've done was... so many bad things yeah. i've done catholic... so many bad things you know what the catholic version of this movie is it's the guy making the time machine then feeling bad because it like puts him on a level with god then masturbating then killing himself <laughs> and then four hours of funeral scenes that's the Catholic version of this movie. <laughs> and then a pre-Vatican II... Ma- no, the Catholic time machine movie would be a guy would invent a time machine so he could go back and hear pre-Vatican II mass in Latin. <laughs> 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 That's all he would use it for. In this movie, the Protestant who's lost his faith becomes Christ's executioner. Awesome. Blows okay, his awesome. goddamn head off. <laughs> He's fucking after hearing, looks after hearing God English. on the ground crawling in agony and is like, fuck you. After hearing him speak English. And acknowledging that it was and acknowledging I don't the I, fact that the only way he could be speaking English to him was because it was some sort of fucking supernatural fucking. And uh, he's like, fuck you. My family's dead. That's all that yeah. matters. So no, he's like, you didn't save my family. Out. You didn't save my family, the son of God, actually, who I'm talking to through both the miracle of time travel and the fact that this is a divine that presence. Christian religion is real. You did not. You didn't save my family. So if you think I'm saving you, you got another thing coming, buddy. Pow! Pow! Blow! So sick. So, so sick. fucking badass. I don't want to chime in too much in, in this thing, but I do want to just underscore how from the moment Christ gets executed with a handgun, <laughs> how from... <laughs> How much from zero to 60 this thing goes immediately? Because it's like from up to this, like the tone is like kind of like, ah, this will be another Christian film. And like, oh, yeah, we see the the guy who's a scientist and the girl who's Christian. They debate and there's the family. And then from this moment on, this is like full on sci-fi time travel, multiple time streams, people killing themselves from other time time streams. So yeah, like and it's still like an hour and a half left in the movie. it honestly rocks. So, like, I mean, at this point, like, like this is going to become very complicated to like accurately uh, relate the plot of a movie to you because obviously, anytime you have to do with time, like time travel and multiple timelines, things get very convoluted. And this is, of course, different than usually when we have a hard time describing the plot of Christian movies because everyone looks identical. <laughs> and they're just all standing in uh, kitchens around like marble countertops. And you're like, so, I stopped paying attention to who any of these people are 10 minutes ago. This is this, actually like kind of hard because they're, they really take the time travel thing seriously. And you know what? Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, I think probably like the, the two best time travel movies ever made, uh, La Jete and the original Terminator. This movie does have a, I wouldn't say maybe airtight. I have to see it again. But it does like fulfill for itself within the movie's own logic, like an actually like closed time loop where things like like it, it makes an inher- there is an inherent internal logic to the time travel in the movie that like closes itself off and like resolves itself ni- nicely. Rather impressively, because so, you've got scenes where people are like sign languaging signals to themselves from a different time stream yep. that only they yes. would understand. Yeah. Yes. And, you've got, actually, and, no- and they keep creating like duplicate versions of people and then every one of those duplicate versions are dealt with and like 
you yeah, know, they, all the like or or clothes. Clothes. Yeah, No, no. Like at, at this point, like the movie becomes about how Rom and the three other geniuses have to like use the time machine to like go back in time and stop Ahmed from changing history. Now, there's another sort of novel, I, th I think actually, or maybe even original to this movie. I mean, maybe it's been done before in other sci-fi stories, but the explanation about changing something in the past doesn't instantaneously change, alter the present. Yeah. Because the it way Ron time. describes it is that it takes time. It's like the speed of light. It only appears instantaneous, but it actually has a fixed speed. And then if you go back like, you know, 2,000 years in the past and change something, it, it like it takes a certain amount of time. It could be a minute, a day, an hour, a week to catch up to the present. Time has to rewrite itself throughout the continuum. And he describes it like a hard drive, like wiping a memory or like reformatting like a hard drive. Yeah. Which is like, look, I mean, it's all sci-fi gobbledygook. But, you know, within the movie, I thought it was a pretty good explanation for why, like, as soon as Jesus was assassinated in the past, it doesn't instantly alter everything about the present. So they still have time to use the time machine themselves to go back to the same point in time and try to, like, stop it from happening. So then, like, once they go back in time, they go back in time to the moment that the SWAT team arrives and then they like they 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 prevent it from happening, and Jesus is taken by the Romans. But then like they are killed, or when they when they go back, I do. They're I killed do want to instantly. shout out the kind of novel way that they that they four unarmed nerds deal with the SWAT team, which is getting there moments before the SWAT team gets there, and just picking up logs. And holding the logs into where the SWAT team is materializing. This is another just moment. Exploding their hearts. Yeah, because this is another at, moment. At first, this is another moment where I was like, like I was trying to get, I was trying to get snotty yeah. about like picking holes in the movie, and I was like, wait a second, these fucking like science nerds just took out a whole team of operators with sticks, but no, they place the sticks in the fucking pl in the space in which the bodies materialize. So with their body, like your heart. When it reforms, like when the molecules and atoms are like, uh, like come back together in the in the, the the other space and time, your heart forms around a fucking tree branch yeah, and you die bitch. instantly. Yeah, amazing. Not bad. He thought it through. God love him. Not bad. Jesus Not bad. Amazing. This guy worked his ass off on this. So. It, like and then again, like I'm not going to faithfully render exactly what happens because it does get convoluted because there are multiple timelines now where the original Rom that goes back into the past goes back to the present and is killed. Yeah. And then but he is they're able to send a message to the Rom that exists in that timeline before he had gone back in time to to do to go back in time again and like re like continue the mission or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like and also to this movie's credit there it, it gets pretty grisly for one of these like there's not that much like actual blood or anything but a lot of people get killed. There are shots tons. in this movie multiple that times are just like so yeah, some people get killed multiple times through different time time con continuities. There are shots where it's just like a pile of bodies of people who had just been killed in the past, including some of the main characters who end up living through the entire movie as corpses. Yeah, just hanging out in the time tra or chamber or seeing their have, own yeah. dead bodies. Yes, which has got to be pretty pretty disturbing, right? Yeah. Seeing it themselves happens. murdered on camera. I would say every character sees themselves killed about three times in the last half of this movie. Very traumatic. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, so like, I, again, like I'm not, I'm not going to get a, a, identically like the, the details of the plot here because it does become kind of like a Christian uh, sound of thunder story, but it doesn't, it doesn't do it in like the really cliched way of like, Oh, like a butterfly flaps its wings or like you step off the line and then like, you know, you come back to the future and everyone's a mutant or like everything is radically different. But uh, there is one scene I do want to talk about where the black guy character has a moment where he's, he blips back into time exactly in the garden at Gethsemane. And it's Jesus having his moment of temptation in the garden. And then all of a sudden there's like, like this guy who's just like, Hey, Hey buddy, what's up? <laughs> hey, I like, I, I think I know you. I think you're Jesus Christ. And then like, he starts telling him like, look, Jesus, man, I saw your movie. I got it on bootleg, which I, he said, I got your movie on bootleg, clearly referring to the passion of the Christ. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, listen, man, listen, bruh, I'm not going to lie to you. They fuck your shit up real good. <laughs> like they, they whip you. They fucking, they're going to, they're going to put a crown of thorns on you. They're going to nail your ass to a two by four and let you hang there for three days while you suffocate. Not good. But then the weird thing is he's trying to talk Jesus out of it, which would, functionally 
fulfill the same role that Ahmed the terrorist is trying to do by killing him. Yeah, he re- the guy really does not get Christianity. <laughs> he no, does not yeah, really I, comprehend the whole idea. He has a good heart, yeah. but he you is... You don't want to see a guy get like go through that, but he kind of has to. Yeah, no, and, and Jesus really wants to. He's like, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the, uh, the drug scenes in Walk Hard. <laughs> no, no, you don't want no part you of this. You don't want that. They're gonna whip you. They're gonna beat you. You're gonna die for all mankind's sins. You don't want that. So at some point, Brant and Sabir, who's the evil Muslimic henchman, like Mark, two of them sent are, are sent back again into the same back to 33 A.D. in the Garden of Gethsemane. They get separated or something, and then they like they're stuck there. Everyone has these weird little like wrist time wristwatches, or is what, what like what can like actually like th- these are the thing that allows them to be retrieved from yeah. that space. It's to it's the more other sci-fi space woo-woo in the present. Stuff, but it, again, it like the way they set it up, it like narratively works. If you have one of these wristwatches on, you can get taken back. If you lose yours, you're stuck there. You're yes. stuck in the fir- in first century Palestine, which again, like you don't you don't speak the language. You have like you're dressed Hold differently no than currency. anyone else. And then, like, the girlfriend at one point gets shot in the stomach and is just bleeding out in the desert, like, in the fucking some dirty-ass town <laughs> next to Golgotha for a couple of days. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, then, so then Brant, the, the executor of Christ, but in this timeline, they have prevented that. So Christ still is alive in this 33 AD Mark II. He has been taken by the Romans at this point and is being, like, led on the procession to, to Calvary. Brant, like they get like local clothes and Brant is trying to like blend in. And but Sabir, the asshole, keeps his gun with him and they're just like walking through a market and he just like steals a tomato. That actually is an that that is a bit of actual. That's a goof. That tomato is a goof new fruit. Does not exist. Tomatoes not exist. Did not exist at that point. Get a point date or something. Come on. Yeah, you read yeah. the Bible. You know what fruits are in there. Yeah. Tomatoes are not one of them. Dude, it's like, yeah, like, oh, dude, the hottest thing right now is like, you know, ancient grains. Yeah. Just any of those Ezekiel products, that those existed in the Bible. Yeah. All of those delicious grain, all those delicious whole grains. You could get them at any market in Palestine. They're great. They're good for you. Wholesome. Delicious. So he like, he steals a tomato and then, of course, runs afoul of the, you know, the, 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 the tomato salesman and the Roman security. And like the Romans are like, you know, oh, oh, they're trying to arrest him and they take out their short sword. And then Samir, like an idiot, just pulls out his Glock and pops the dude straight in the chest. <laughs> and then, of course, they're overcome. And uh, Samir and Brant are arrested by the Roman authorities, which leads to the, I think, actually the most incredible moment. In Mind this blowing. Just brilliant, so brilliant I, like, I'm going to set it up. It. I'm going to set it up because, OK, so they're they're witnessing like the black guy is in the crowd witnessing the procession to Golgotha. And then, like, you know, Christ falls down and he's being whipped by the Romans. And, like, you know, he intervenes and is like, come on, man. Like, you know, like he's had enough or whatever. And then unwittingly becomes the person in the Bible who carries the cross for Jesus on the procession to Golgotha. Yeah. Wearing like a tri blend gap tee and a pair of. (laughs) Yes. He's he's wearing, yeah, he's wearing Nike sneakers jeans and like yeah a, like a, a gap tri blend like a nice sort of like air like breathable fabric t-shirt yes <laughs> everyone else is in, in robes and sandals yep. nobody <laughs> seems to like you know uh, care too much about notice too much about that so then we get to see um uh, at this point ram uh his girlfriend has been gut shot by one of the operators brant and Br- no 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 not brant ram's girlfriend has been shot in the gut by brant yes yeah that's by Brant. She sh- okay, not, sorry. Like, cause he, yeah, it's important that Brant shoots her. Brant shoots her in the stomach, and she's dying of a gunshot wound in first century Palestine. Not much they can do for you. He's like carrying her around. He's like, doctor, doctor, anyone? Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> and then walks up to. Oh, I I, I forgot. Um, uh, when they were arrested by the Roman Romans, uh, Sabir loses his time wristwatch, and then a woman, a woman you may know. T- picks the wristwatch up off the ground and, and takes it with her. So Ram and his gutshot girlfriend show up at Golgotha to watch Christ be crucified. Ram carries the girl up to the crucified Christ and does his whole thing about like, you're an a- how could you let this happen? If you were really the son of God, you would save her. Like, uh, you know, how could you do this? Blah, blah. While he's doing this, let's not forget Three people were crucified with two people were crucified with Christ. 
he looks up and the guys next to Christ on the cross are talking to him and they are Sabir and Brant. Boom. The, the good thief and the impenitent thief are actually time-traveling assassins sent back to kill Christ before his martyrdom. And best of all, the good priest, the good thief, the one who converts on the cross and gets forgiven by Jesus is Brant, the guy who blew Jesus's brains out in another time uh, uh, stream. This is what I mean. Incredible. Like, like that, that scene where like the time-traveling operator assassins are in fact the good thief and the impenitent thief from the Bible who are crucified with Christ. That's what I mean. It was like this is like like a real like it, like if Philip K. Dick wrote this story, like it would be fucking incredible. Like yeah. this is something right out of his fucking body of work. This is the Black Iron Prison. The Roman Empire never left. The fucking pink light. Like we are all still the <laughs> disciples of Christ. Like Christ said, told his followers, "I will return." like after the Roman Empire. And the reason the, you know, Christ has not returned is because the Roman Empire has never ended and we are still living in it. We are still living in the black iron prison. Get on that pink light from the Vallis signal. It is beaming out of you. It is, it, we are still all living in first century Palestine as followers of Christ, whether we're aware of it or not, but we are still living under the tyranny of the Roman Empire. And that, yes, the two people crucified with Christ were time traveling assassins sent back to kill him. Yeah. I sim- yeah. one, I simply, one Muslim, I simply one must Christian. stress that. I simply must stress It's amazing. That. What, then no one ever talks about the martyred operator in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like you guys know how much I love Mormons, right? Yeah. But the idea that a troop went back in time to to kill Jesus and then forgive him and then be crucified is th- Protestants now beat Mormons. In making, I gotta say, they gotta yeah. step up their game after this. Mormons, I believe in you guys. I'm big fan of you guys, but right now the Proties are ahead. Let's do. Let's do this. You know, um, Mormons introduced the, like like the the space travel and like you know sort of a galactic sci fi um, plot to Christianity. But now with this movie, the evangelicals have come right back with a a hard sci fi time travel element to Christianity as well. I, I have to say. Is this how we get Warhammer? Is this how Warhammer <laughs> becomes real? Because this movie, I hope this movie is a hit because I want a lot of evangelical psychos who abuse Adderall to get really into quantum mechanics. Yes. Let's put, and make Trump the emperor from Warhammer. Yeah. This Let's is how it. we get it. All right. So all right, where, where does this movie go next? Okay. No. All right. So remember. So, so Jesus. So, so wait a minute. Ram is in front of Jesus. Amy's dying in his arms. And he's yelling at Jesus to save her because he's like, if you're who you say you are, you have the power to stop all this and you're not doing it. And Jesus tells him, you have to forgive Brant. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's dying because he shot her. Help me. And then it all ends. And he's like, God damn, he's mad at Jesus. What I love about that scene, though, is that it presupposes that Christ's last words on the cross were forgive Brant. Forgive Brant. Yes. (laughs) And it was like, uh, it, it is accomplished. Yeah. The forgiveness of Brant. <laughs> Which is a very American evangelical idea. Yeah, yeah. this is a guy named Brant. A guy named Brant. Like, yeah, Bible. Cameron and Brant were saved by Jesus <laughs> on the cross. <laughs> yeah. So like, he goes uh, no, back. No, 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 don't don't give us Barabbas. Don't give us Barabbas. Give us Hunter. Yeah. We want give, take take him down off the cross. No, I cannot, dude. They are evangelicals are going to write books of the Bible called like the books of Tyler after this. I can't wait. Yeah. Because according to this, like there was a guy named Brandt at the crucifixion, and that's it ties the entire thing together. The sensation that that the two thieves being Brandt and Sabir being an incredible loop to close, again, that's just like the first of like six concentric loops that this that the movie continues yeah. to close. I, I forget at what point um, in the plot this happens, but like obviously dealing with time travel, the the classic Ray Bradbury sound of thunder conception of it that altering the past changes the present in unexpected ways. So at one point, Ahmed, like in the present, like experiences like like a quantum shift and is like, aha, like Allah be praised, like the finally the Christian filth are gone from the world. And I was really, I, again, this movie beat my expectations because like the shitty Christian movie would have shown you like a present, ver- like a version of our reality in which Christianity had never existed. And it would be like, I don't know all of our women are in like the harem of some big fat guy who's like a sultan or, you know, like I, just, I like, was saying that I wanted a, uh, 
a, a CGI shot of the New York City skyline, but all the tops of the uh, the skyscrapers are all minarets. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting something kind of hokey and offensive like that. But what they show is that like, he instantly thinks it works and he's like, Allah be praised. All the Christian dogs have like, been erased from history. And then it, the quantum, it quantum shifts again and they are standing in like, I don't know, the, like the fallout ruins of a city, of like a post-apocalypse. And then like, I think the Latino character says, like, this is the world you created. This is the world that exists without forgiveness, without, without the mercy of, of Christ. And it's just like, and, and, and Matt, you made another interesting point where like this app, this goes against the, like, uh, like the, the idiotic and racist, like Ben Shapiro, Jer- Athens, Jerusalem, Athens to Jerusalem thesis. Yeah, that, like, like you like, can't have yeah. any like modern society without Christianity. Yeah. You can't have technology or like any of the, the, you know, the, the, the sort of like the, or a modern technological society were it not for the Athens to Jerusalem connection. What this movie says is that even if you erase Christianity, you would still have like a 21st century like technological society with cities and computers and cars and all that shit. But it would be like a a blasted ruin because uh, without the Christ message of love and forgiveness, uh, humanity would have invariably destroyed itself. So that like that is the one like sort of actual like sound of thunder mega like global level ramifications for this plot uh, being pulled off. But then again, it's like, you know, it's undone in various other timelines. So I, I forget kind of how that resolves itself. But it, well, it doesn't because like they, they, they dissolve because all those like they cut away from those guys because eventually what happens is Ram gets back and, and he goes back to right before his parents were going to get killed, saves his parents from getting killed, which means all those other timelines don't happen. So like all those versions of Amir and everybody the ones who die, the ones who live, they all like wink out of existence and they actually show it happening to a few people. And it's very much, uh, it's, uh, infinity wars, Thanos, like they turn into, uh, like dust and float off. Yeah. This is Christian Avengers. And this is actually a far better movie than infinity war. Oh, unquestionably. Like, unquestionably. like this is, this is like, uh, it's better written. It's, it's smarter and like, and less grading against like my, like just moral, artistic, and philosophical sense than any yeah. Marvel movie ever. Yeah, made. T- the time travel between Infinity War and Endgame. Uh, this makes much more sense and is much more ambitious in what it's trying to accomplish. Oh yeah, yes. like because usually, Far like more. by by now, like I said, time travel has been so beat to death in movies that like once you introduce the gobbledygook, you can just do anything. Like no one's paying attention at all. It's just like it's all just like a Deus Ex Machina. Whereas this has the an actual Deus Ex Machina because God is real, but. <laughs> a time travel plot line that actually kind of makes sense. So once again, hats off to director and writer Jim Carroll. Yeah, Just I gotta tra- say, he, I respect him a great deal. Do, do you want to hear what Jim Carroll's major other uh, credit is? Yeah, what is it? Of course, he did a show called Marriage Boot Camp. Oh, I know about that show. That's yeah, a, I that's remember really that show. High yeah. tier reality show. Yeah, he was the host of Marriage Boot Camp and also has appeared as himself on Poker Night in America for several seasons. That's a strong evangelical tradition, Poker Night in America. So I, 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 I remember like the, towards the end, there's another scene where Ahmed is like, OK, well, my my uh, like, OK, so my plot to kill Christ before he's cr- he's martyred on the cross. OK, like that's that's kaput now. So I'm going to go to a, a new timeline where I'm going to go to the 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 tomb and like you know remove his body before his followers can like you know pretend or witness his resurrection which again if you're a devout muslim you don't think christ was resurrected so you're just going to kind of like do some shenanigans with the body but then if you remove the body it's sort of like that's that is a sign of something miraculous so uh, did anyone catch that could you explain that wait which part the, where the ahmed goes, goes to, to the, the tomb. tomb oh uh I honestly know. They end up going to the tomb and seeing Jesus. And his girl and the girlfriend gets to witness the resurrection. Yeah, the Christ. girlfriend witnesses the resurrection before she dies. And she like gets like uh, you know, gets she the gets Jesus. some FaceTime with JC. Gets some J- yeah. FaceTime with JC. But the ba- the gist of it is is that they like protect his emergence and like Mary and the people, they see him, they go into the thing, they're okay. waving for some reason that I don't I mean some things I missed. One of them was they're they're in the cave waving glow sticks, which really impress Mary. No, a- Ahmed brings glow sticks to the cave to, you know, just like give him some. So some, they can rave know. out. Yeah, <laughs> some reading light uh, while he's waiting there. So, uh, But like, yeah, at the end of it, 
the, the thing that matters is after all these twists and turns, and it is very Baroque, but they all make sense. Uh, Rom shows back up uh, right before his parents get killed, saves his parents while he, while he is tied to a chair about to watch them get killed, and then goes to stop the whole thing. Ahmed gets to drop on him with his guys, but then Brant gets a... This is, okay, so so, so uh, uh, Ram Mark 2 or 3 goes back to three. a timeline where he's interacting with Brant Mark 1 before he goes back in time to execute Jesus Christ. Right. And, and that, that yes. Ram Mark 3 is aware that Brant will, in the future, kill his girlfriend. But Jesus has told him, forgive Brant. Yeah. So like, so there's a point where Ram has the gun on Brant, who's just like, buddy, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Time travel? <laughs> What's the, this is a bit much for me. I haven't killed Amy yet. I don't know what you're talking about. And he's just like, you will, you, you, ass, you bastard or whatever. But he can't stop thinking about what Christ told him. And Ram makes the decision not to, to forgive Brant, Mark 1, before he goes back in time to kill Jesus and his girlfriend. So like, Brant experiences a moment of Christian forgiveness and like that is his sort of like re-coming to faith. And the other interesting thing that I that I said when I was watching this is by introducing a time travel element to a religious movie, it dramatizes just for the viewer, but for the, the characters in the movie that are normal people who are not the son of God, the choice to like to die or to forgive someone that you know will kill you or someone you love in the future. It, it dramatizes in a way that makes more literal like the, the, the Christian act of forgiveness. Like, so it's sort of like it, it, it puts you in the mindset of like the, both Christ's decision to give up his own life and to suffer and die for humanity, but also the decision to forgive the people who persecuted him while, you know, while they were doing it, essentially. So like, like with time travel, it gives you like you have the foreknowledge of what will happen and you still make the same choice. OK, um, tell me if this is a little crazy, but what do you think the theological or historical significance of Jesus Christ, of God saying that the presumably Jewish scientist must forgive the Gentile soldier? He's this thinking about lady. himself. Yeah. I mean, like, because, okay, well, the Romans weren't Christian at the time, but he's, you know, Brant is a soldier of a, the modern Roman Empire, America. Yes. He is a centurion who, you know, it, it would have killed a young Jewish man. Yes. And wait, what does that young Jewish man do at the end of the movie? Oh, my oh. God. Okay, so this is where it goes. After Brant, like, Brant, he, like, you know, he saves Ram and his family from Ahmed and his goons. Like, you know, he, like, uh, he, he takes out his gun and, you know, he, he, he shoots the bad guys. And then he has killed himself in that moment. He sacrifices or, himself. Or uh, Brant gets shot presumably dead. We find out later he's not. I think yes. Um, Brant, yeah, yeah, Brant is, is shot multiple times. Like, but he sacrifices himself. And in accepting Rom's forgiveness, like, he sort of, like, his heart is reopened to, to God. Like, he realizes... That like you know like uh, God could technically allow something awful to happen to you, but like the God is always there, and like like His love and forgiveness is like not contingent on anything. It's always there for you if you just walk through that door. I don't know so, how granular we want to get, but when Ram forgives Brant, he hears a voice from the other world that he says it sounds British, and Ram and Brant's like, "My wife is British. What you know? What does it say?" And it's played and by it, Heidi Montag. Says, I just like, without an English accent, accent. who does not yeah. have an English accent. And it at says, all. "Well, it comes in. No, it comes out at one point in the in the first scene, and he gets horny." Yeah, uh, and she says, "Be a hero," and that's what causes Brant to step up and uh, you know shoot the goons instead of shooting Ram. And then, and then Ram Ram Mark Three is also killed just as Ram Mark I walks in the door and sees like his body sort of almost like a, a pied d'etat scene being cradled by Amy, like almost like 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 Mary. You know what I mean? He's seeing his broken body, which then disappears as it's erased from that timeline, I think. Yes. Oh, so, also Ram, Ram ends up killing Ahmed with the same knife that he keeps on his desk that his parents were executed by. Right. Okay. So, and then at this point, the cops have called in, the terrorist plot has been foiled, and Mark one of the four geniuses and like the new timeline are all alive. 
but they've realized, you know, like they, they're, they are aware of the time travel plot and what has happened and their role in it. And like, they know to, to, to end time travel. Yes. But not before the, the last act that Rom does with his three friends is that he uses the matter transporter to go back in time dressed as like a road worker and goes back in time to the very beginning of the movie and blinks into space right in front of Brant and his family's car with a stop sign so that they jerk the wheel and are saved from the truck that would have T-boned the car and killed his family before. And then like he, he goes right back. like The instant he comes and saves them, he, he removes himself from the timeline. But he has a little like road worker stop sign there. And like, you know, Heidi Montag says to Brant, like, who was that guy? Was he an angel? Like, where did he go or whatever? Like, I don't know. And then at this point in the movie, we're like, okay, that this doesn't make any sense because if he had saved Brant, like, like Brant would still be in the position in that timeline to carry out the evil acts of the terrorist leader, right? It negates like his sacrifice and like his moment of doubt and then recoming to God and then eventually his sacrifice and just restarts the whole plot of the fucking movie essentially, but this guy now has a family. No, not the case. On the stop sign, he had written a letter to Brant that says, call the FBI and Homeland Security and like lays out the whole pot for him and stops it before it even starts. All threads are tied off. Humanity is redeemed, forgiven, and through the use of time travel, we have like a, 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 a fairly interestingly done sort of like reenactment of Christ's own martyrdom and execution as execution martyrdom and kind of forgiveness that nonetheless ends in a happy ending for every this is honestly a true masterclass and honestly it is as as chris pointed it out like the big reason these movies are often boring is because they hinge on someone making a change of heart which is very hard to make interesting visually and, and narratively this movie dramatized like forgiveness and uh, as a, like an action through the use of the time travel plot in a way that actually made it compelling and not just, oh, now he now he thinks God's good. The scene where Ram get, makes his final conversion and accepts Christian forgiveness, you literally have a situation in that last room where he knows that his version must die, Ram Mark III. He knows he must die so that everyone else can live. He literally oh, has the Christ knowledge. Incredible. And, and this was another incredible Philip K. Dick moment. As Ram Mark III dies... He asks his Christian girlfriend to read from her Bible app called I Disciple. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I love <laughs> An that. An account of Jesus being taken by the Romans that they had experienced in the film before. And she reads him a part in the book about like a man who's like, you know, clothes are, are, are ripped off of him or wearing like an odd fabric of clothes that is in the actual Gospel of Matthew. Chris, you look this up. It is in Mark. It is something that, yeah, it's, sorry, it's in it's, Mark. It's in Mark. It's, uh, it's Mark 1451. Uh, a young man followed Jesus with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And literally as that's, Jesus... De- that's depicted in the scene where they like they, they first go back in time. And it's so played he as a realizes, bit of a goofy so- movie moment as the centurions are attacking. He gets his clothes ripped off and, and like, he's runs running away in his, his underwear. Yeah, yeah, he's running around in, in white boxers. And then as Ram Mark III is dying, he realizes that like, the Bible is real. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And not only that, his own actions are part of the historical record that he knows to be true. And this is how true the Bible is, that that detail of himself running around in boxers is in the fucking Gospels that yep. he read himself, or like presumably as a kid, or was aware of. So this raises one question for me. Do all the different versions of these people, the righteous ones, do they go to heaven? Are there three ROMs in heaven or are they like, you know, when they die, are their memories sort of like melded wait, back with the regular no. ROM? Wait, Matt, what's another thing that is in triplicate, but is also one? <gasps> oh, oh, my God. Oh, All right. This fuck. movie is going to win the Oscar. There's only this movie. Genius. Fucking owns. <laughs> All right, guys, you don't even know the best part, though. Okay, I was going to say, we, we we hit stop before Matt did. But Matt, you said that there's a little Easter I'm egg. I'm very uh, glad that I just sequence. left it running because halfway through the credits, the credits move to one side of the screen and a, another scene pops up. So early in the film, uh, right after uh, Brant blows away Jesus, uh, <laughs> Ram goes back to time, goes back to the, the, goes back to the, the, the lab, uh, and like 
there's a scene where him and Amy get into like the portal room, lock it, and try to signal to themselves in another room. That's the scene where Amy does sign language to herself. What we didn't say is that those versions of Amy and uh, Ram, they get shot. Like the, the, the terrorist henchmen break in, they shoot them. And then the other ones go back in time, and then that's where they kill the guys with the sticks, and that's where the other things start. So one version of uh, the first version of Amy and Ram get killed in the portal area, and that's the last we see them. This takes up where that scene ended with them shot on the ground. Then you see what we didn't see while watching the movie chronologically uh, because the characters had left uh, to go back in time. Uh, Rom like gets up. He's not dead. He's just really badly wounded. And he crawls over to Amy, and she's also very da- badly wounded. And he says, it's okay. I'm going to save us. So he crawls over to the time machine, and he puts it, the, the coordinates for the local hospital for 30 years in the future, presumably thinking that they will have advanced technology that will make them able to survive. So then he crawls back over with dying uh, um, Amy under the crackling time portal lights, and they get sucked forward. Camera is now on them as they like emerge on concrete. They're lying on concrete. They're both bloody. You can hear in the background gunshots. Like It sounds like a, a battle scene, like, like the crackle of automatic weapons fire. Four guys who sort of look like operators. They've got like, uh, they've got, they kind of look like the white helmets, honestly. Uh, they've got, you know, tactical gear on and they go, oh, look, here they are. Well, who are these guys? And they like, they cl- crawl over them with devices, like future, they kind of just look like iPads. And then they like po- poke them with, but- with these like little tongs. And then one of them says, my God, they're not marked. Neither of them are. They're clean. And then what somebody else says, I wonder what the Antichrist wants with them. Oh, uh, God damn Fuck. it. Cut. Fuck. Cut. Okay. So the sequel to this, we got to do it. Okay. They, I can't wait. They do we, a should, sequel, we should honestly in the invest in the sequel. Sequel. If they oh, wanna, my if, God. If, if, if Jim Carroll, yeah. if you want to make a sequel to this movie about the, because the, like those left behind movies suck ass. The Book of Revelation is one of the most entertaining things ever written. One of the great oh, it's like pieces of, of, of like just it's, it's fucking oh yeah, grotesque so much art. Stuff you can it's do like, with it. it's awesome. And one of my favorite books is the fake part of the Bible, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and and its rendition by Christians has been dog shit. Left Behind movies are terrible. Uh, even the one with Nick Cage is somehow even oh, worse. Oh, it's so than the boring. Ones with Kirk it's so boring. Uh, Most of it takes place on an airplane. Yeah. It's awful. I want to see Jim Carroll tackle the Rapture because in his version, it's basically the Syrian civil war. And like they apparently fell into a bunch of, I think because they said they're clean, they I think the it means the that beast. they are the, they, yeah, the, uh, the ones who have rejected the mark of the beast and are fighting against Antichrist. Oh man, fuck! That's a that's a fucking dude. Adding a time travel narrative into like the apocalypse and Book of Revelation, fuck yes. Yeah, let's and, get you know, it. Like, like, I'll just say like overall. Like, you know, like this is like a pretty hokey movie, but it was like better, honestly better than a lot of the movies I see, like contem- modern 100%. movies that I see now. Like it's smarter and better thought out than a lot of shit. It's clunky at points, but I will say like the, the crucially outside of just pure like acting and directing and production competence, what this movie has that like all the rest don't or crucially what it doesn't have is that it has a religious message, but it has none of the just like clunky cloying like culture war bullshit where they just render all of their sort of culture war totems just one for one on screen to make a point that like they would make other that they would you could easily just make on the radio or fox news or something or like through religious broadcasting like like they're smart enough to know that like to make a movie that works and like has a religious message that like i said that three degenerates like us can like really sink our teeth into is that like render it in such a way that it, it it does away with all of like the political like like point settling or just like propagandizing or whatever and it puts the actual like philosophical content of it and the story first and it's like it's so, it's so much more effective as a movie if it just doesn't have all this clunky stuff about like well after they outlawed uh, Christian marriage and only gay people could have families you know like or just like yeah really boring like awful shit like that yeah, which is what was just stock and trade of like most of these movies this movie like there's so much about time travel that they literally did not have room in the script or time to be like. Oh, yeah, like, welcome to the future. You have to bake a cake for trans people. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 they, and they didn't even, like, blame it on Islam. 
They just no. said, this is what happens if you have, like, a, you know, civilization that doesn't value forgiveness. Now, you can argue that that's kind of blinkered and incorrect. I mean, let's ask sure. people at the Seas of Matterberg what they thought about Christian forgiveness. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> uh, it's, it's not as, yeah, as, like, over-the-top, like, culture war grievance-mongering as most of these movies are. Other, no, yeah. other than its de- depiction I mean, of, look, of, like, it, it, Islamists get okay, like, a time it, machine, first it's, thing, it's, murder it's Christ. It's depiction of Islamists. Well, yeah, they are. Hold it, on a minute. These guys, they do explicitly say that they are extremists. Yeah, and they say, like, and, like, they're, like, uh, it's, I think Amy says at one point, like, well, why would Muslims want to, like, do away with Christianity? And then Ram says, like, they don't. These are extremists, you know? It's like they, they have that little t- t- tip of the cap or whatever. <laughs> but I will say this. It's depiction of Islamic terrorism is certainly no worse than any Not other movie all. made by liberal Hollywood. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, it's right? more, this movie is just as offensive as Zero Dark Thirty. Oh, oh yeah. and like, and way less it, offensive because Zero yeah, Dark Thirty yeah, is about a real thing that fucking happened. Yeah. And is and actual propaganda for unlike the fucking Zero CIA. Dark 30, unlike Zero Dark Thirty, you know who stops the extremists? A multiracial multi uh neurotypical and neuroatypical <laughs> congregation <laughs> of people. Not just the lily white operators. And, you know, Ahmed the bad guy is killed in, like, you know, kind of an action movie kind of thing. But, like, the message of Zero Dark Thirty is just, like, let's roll, baby. We're finally getting revenge for 9-11. Whereas, like, the actual message of this movie is is about forgiveness. Forgiveness and love and, like, using science for beautiful Christian ends. This movie is, has way better politics than any crap from liberal godless hollywood i, yes. I would i would yes, say yes, give absolutely. jim carroll a, a marvel movie but i don't want his talents wasted on that no it would be a waste of jim carroll it would be an absolute waste like this man i'm tra- like if you are if you're listening and you're like an evangelical boat magnate or you like you make some type of weird fucking root beer that everyone in texas drinks that <laughs> i've never heard of like you're a billionaire for the evangelical reasons maybe you invented like a christian mattress <laughs> Please fund this man. Please fund this Mike man. Mike Lindell, stop bu- building PPE in your pillow factories and give money to Jim Carroll to make the sequel to this movie. Fire, yes. fire K- Sorbo, fire K- Kirk Cameron. Those people are hacks. Get these actors. Get, dude, Ram Goldstein, he's like, he's the new Christian Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> like, very, like, <laughs> delicate features, but, like, stacked bod. <laughs> yeah. He is ripped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, like in the beginning of the movie, Amy, the one sort of stand in for the like Christian character who is like devout, is not a cloying harpy. She's yeah. not a judgmental fucking like uh, like culture war fucking uh, ghoul. She's like a normal fucking person who exists in like a modern world that, that she doesn't hate and loathe like yeah. every aspect of it. And and Rom is like as the science guy. He he's not like like they're dating. He's as not the Jewish he's not guy. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. As the, as the, as the, <laughs> the, you know they're dating. He, he's he's not like you, uh, you're atheist. you're an idiot. I could never I could never you know right. see intellectually and with you. You know what's so important about Rom? Rom he has morality in, in, in like divorced from religion. Like even the scenes where he's an atheist, he refuses to like give a time machine to a terrorist just out of morality. <laughs> like he's. They allow for atheistic characters to have yes to be a good person and values yeah. and yeah because no. like the stupid Kevin Sorbo worldview is like oh if you don't believe in God like what's stopping you from killing and raping a child and yeah it's just like well you know, yeah my conscience like Kevin- you know like my I don't know like anything my imagination empathy like you know like a moral or ethical sense that isn't contingent on uh, belief in an afterlife and like you know this movie presupposes that you get that that's real that you don't have to believe in God to be a good person, but it helps, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, I would love to collab with Jim Carroll. <laughs> Absolutely, let's get, in the, let's get in the stew. Yeah, I, he's a master. He's an so, absolute master. I, I so, think the last time we did one of these, I was saying that, you know, I think on the the Reliant, I was like, we should make, what does it cost to make one of these? Like three, four million? We three could definitely get We could get that. But honestly, I mean, like, if we wanted to make the Reliant, we could just like goof off and like shit out a script over over the weekend and then like raise some money and Easy. go film it as like a goof. If we wanted to get in like Jim Carroll's production company, we would have to like really put some work into it. Oh no, we would have to sweat. We would have to. We could not half-ass a collaboration with Jim Carroll. I mean, Jim Carroll. Jim Carroll would know when you're half-assing. Like, there's a reason that Jim Carroll didn't work on like these bullshit other movies. He's like a fucking actual artist. And you know, you know how you know he took it seriously because there's a goddamn scene where a guy has to draw on the dirt to explain the different parallel time streams and dimensions. Are we safe from the time continuum overwriting? 
We transferred from Continuum A and we materialized in Continuum B, which is a part of Continuum A, but by being here in theory, we're creating a new Continuum C. Time can't loop itself. We should be fine. Okay, well, well, well. slow that down and say that again. If B overrides A, then there won't be a time continuum for us to return to. Nothing to go back to. We're just stuck here. I don't know yet. So, I guess just like wrapping it up, like, just, I cannot stress to you the contrast between this film and the fireman prophecies. Oh, God. <laughs> so different. Where it's just like a, a like the world's dullest moron yeah. plays Frisbee <laughs> with his wife and then like has night terrors and then realizes that Trump will become president. That's all that happens that in that the, fucking movie. One of the, that was one of the most depressing. Like <laughs> yes. The fireman prophecies was like, it was like everyone involved in that movie had three fentanyl patches on them at all times. Just a lazy piece of shit. The movie it had- was the, It was the artistic equivalent of the sad hard on the only one you can achieve when on opiates. <laughs> yeah, Awful. no, and like, and honestly like that, the Reliant, all, like all of the Dinesta Souza movies, really do like simulate the experience of being on opiates because they seem to take forever and it's just like slow-mo yeah. and everything is just at this totally flat register like i said fireman prophecies is about dog the world's dumbest man starts having night terrors <laughs> and then realizes that trump <laughs> is the way he can get a good night's sleep essentially <laughs> a tr- trump tr- tr- plus a my pillow <laughs> yes Yes. Oh, and then like, oh, then it's like his uh, sort of messianic Jewish chiropractors teach him how to blow a shofar. And that's also (laughs) important to the plot of that movie, I seem to remember. Oh, well, anyway, I got to say this was this was honestly one of probably one of the most philosophical, one of the most theological, this is probably the most theological chapo we've ever had. This is is a great great movie. We've engaged with the, the ideas of Christianity more deeply here than I probably have in the last 25 years of my life. Yeah, it, this is Incredible. a good movie. And if you're quarantined to just like burn a fatty and just be like, damn, just blow no, your yeah, mind. If you're, if you're quarantined, you've got four bucks to, to waste on Amazon and you want to see uh, Christ get <laughs> murdered in the head with a, a Glock. Uh, and also think a lot about the meaning of, of Christian faith. Do you rent this? You could do a whole lot worse than Assassin 33 ID. Certainly. This was, I got to say, like, this this one was a surprise to me. I was me expecting too. this one to be torturous. When I heard I was assassinating just like, Jesus and Heidi Montag, I was pretty pretty confident. I was not looking forward to it. Like I was like, it will be a funny episode, but the movie will be a chore. And instead, I got one of the best movies I've seen this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Like I'm thinking of all the absolute dog shit I've watched on Hulu. Like these movies that just suck ass. And I'm like, why yeah. am I watching this? This is better than all of them. Literally, dude. What so, a fucking delight. Jim Carroll, you own, dude. You're a true alpha. All yeah. right. Well, let's Logitech uh, movie of the year. <laughs> well, let's go out with some 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 other Jim Carroll. Roll that people who died. Yes. Jesus Christ, <laughs> he died, but famously then didn't die. Yes. Okay. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. Jugular vein, and Eddie, I miss you more than all the others.